just about as good as he is. Now, this is, he said, he said, yeah, but it's got to have character. Yeah. <laughs> Dad's look like he hadn't done any work. Yeah. <laughs> Mine has been through a lot. Or maybe he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's better at cleaning. Well, you got to tape these sleeves up, otherwise the bees will get in there and sting you. So, yeah, what I do is I wear a bee suit, and this thing is vented. Uh, you can actually see through it, but there's some foam inside there, little foam balls, and that keeps the bees from being able to sting. The stingers are only so long, and they can't punch through this. So even though you can see through it, they can't sting through you, but you kind of get the airflow so you don't get so hot. Uh, you don't want to wear a, basically a jumpsuit when you're working the bees, so this kind of helps cool you off on a hot day. <laughs> okay, Rich has got me ready, folks. <laughs> Give or take. take it. Speed it up. This is very important. Thanks, see. Some hives have hive beetles. Keith, you see these little beetles? Mm -hmm. These are natural for a hive to have. Very common. And I put these little Swiffer sheets in here. They're mop sheets. And they trap these beetles in here and kind of help the hive out a little bit. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a frame where the comb is capped where the honey's all capped off. That's when it's ready. The moisture content has to be a certain way. It's got to be 18% or less. Uh, that, that's when the moisture's ready to go, when the honey's ready to go, when the moisture content's really low. So I'll pull some frames out, and we're going to look at these and see if they're capped off and ready. If not, we'll keep them in there. So you see, this frame doesn't have any comb built on here yet. It's got some honey right here, but uh, what you need is about 75% of the frame built out. So you got some honey in here. Again, see the white cappings? That's when it's ready to take. What's uncapped is not ready. The moisture content's still too high. So what we'll do is, if this thing's about 75% capped off, we'll take it. We're gonna leave this here with the bees. So here's the frame what we're looking for. 100% capped off. All the honey's capped, that means it's ready to go. It's at a state where the moisture is correct and we can, we can extract the honey out. So here's another frame, a really heavy frame, full of honey, all capped off, it's ready to go. This beautiful honey, you can actually see the color under the capping. Brush them off, what keeps them from wanting to get right back on there again? Well, just it, have to move fast? Yeah, you just have to kind of move fast. Uh, if you move slowly, we'll go back to it. But generally, you, you're taking all the bees off of the, the comb and putting it in, in a place where the bees can't return to it. But um, one thing we always keep in mind is we got to leave a certain amount of honey behind. We can't take all the honey. The bees have to have the honey, that's what they eat. But these bees, when you Put them in boxes like this. These boxes are kind of designed to encourage them to build more, to build a lot of extra honey. Uh, so we take a certain amount. We leave about 60 pounds behind for the winter. So they'll survive, a hive will survive off of 60 pounds of honey. It's one individual hive. There's one queen in this entire box. There's one queen in this box next door. There's one queen in this box next door. There's one queen in that box over there. 
So each one of these hives have an individual queen. And you can sit these hives right next to each other. They know they can go two to six miles away from this hive to forage. They know exactly where to come back. They know not to go in that hive. They know to go in this hive right here. So they know exactly where to go and they orient using the sun. You go to your left there. Seems like you're having more honey on those. Is there a specific way that they work? They, just, they just... build upwards through a hive. So most of the time they go through the middle and expand out. Uh, sometimes it's more on this side, sometimes it's more on this side, but a lot of times you'll notice that there'll be more honey on one side compared to the other side. But if we go deeper into the box, typically all the frames in there will be capped off with honey. This is just the very top box where the honey is being stored. It's usually a little less up there than compared to the other. Now you were talking about aggressive and non-aggressive. What would make the bees Say more aggressive. It's than, genetics. Than just... It's all about genetics, the type of bee. There's actually breeds of bees just like dogs. There's Italian bees, Russian bees, uh, there's uh, Africanized bees that are popular mm -hmm. on television because those are typically the most aggressive bees. Uh, one thing that makes a hive hot, what we call hot is aggressive, is the genetics. If the queen mates with her own drones, drones are the male bees inside mm -hmm. of a hive, and she mates with a drone with multiple drones to, uh, in order to lay more eggs, to lay eggs throughout her lifetime. And if she uh, mates with her own drones, genetically that makes these bees aggressive. But if she mates with the drones from this hive here, it, it doesn't make an aggressive hive. So now the process is I've got to cut the wax cappings off of this and then I'm going to put it in my machine that will sling the honey out into my bucket there. So this is a pretty simple process, just cut the wax off to where we can expose the honey. And under these cappings, just beautiful honey. See that? combs remain but they're empty so we have to turn it over and sling this side Beautiful honey. This is 
and what it's all about right here. Pure honey. You can taste it, you don't have to do anything to it. Amazing. Better than anything you'll find in the store. Yeah, the, the hardest part is the whole year-long process of getting it to this point. You know, managing your hives to get them to where they produce sufficient honey, enough honey for us to actually be able to extract. And uh, the easiest part is this part right here, slinging the honey out. So it's a lot of work, but it pays off. Honey is so good for you. It has so many benefits and, and tastes amazing. You need it on just about anything. And this is it. This is the finished product. Just a bottle of honey. Pure. We do nothing to it. And uh, it tastes great.